Hello everyone. Welcome to Indian Economy by Amon Soni. In today's news are, we shall be discussing the important articles related to economy from the Hindu newspaper. Here in page 1, you can skip this news because it's political in nature. In the open editorial page, there is an article about the hydrogen and the green and hydrogen policy. Let's go through it. India released its green hydrogen policy in February 2022 and it has tried to address the various challenges that the sector is facing. And let's look into the importance of the hydrogen sector, what are the uses, what are the challenges and what should be the way forward. India's per capita energy consumption is just about some one third of the global average and it is just one twelfth of the what the USA is consuming. And the growth of an economy and the prosperity would mean that we would be having more energy consumption in the future because when the economy is growing there would be more production happening and for that we need more energy through the form of electricity or some other form and that is where the role of hydrogen comes in currently we are majorly dependent on imports for our oil and hydrogen can help us reduce these imports and hydrogen is held as the India's gateway to energy independence. That is the importance of hydrogen. So let's see what are those advantages of hydrogen which make it the gateway for energy's independence. The main advantage of hydrogen is that it can be stored on large scale and for a longer duration. And it can also be used in long haul transport. For example, even though there, there are electric vehicles and the batteries which are used for scooters and cars, the electric vehicles, the batteries cannot be used for huge transportation vehicles like the trucks. The energy that is supplied by the EV vehicles and batteries won't be enough to power the trucks for long distances. But it can be solved through the help of hydrogen. Hydrogen can be used even in trucking sector successfully. And hydrogen will also help transition from the unrenewable sources to renewable sources and in helping India achieve the 500 gigawatt of renewable capacity by 2030. How can hydrogen be a game changer here? It will help in decarbonization of the India's transportation sector. The main advantage of the hydrogen over the fuel cell vehicles is the current EV vehicles is that faster fueling and long driving range and which is especially useful for the heavy transportation sector which is not possible with the lithium ion batteries and hydrogen can also help in decarbonizing the various sectors like the steel aluminium copper which are heavily dependent on non renewable sources of energy currently and it can also used in the production of fuels like methanol synthetic kerosene and green ammonia Now, if the en energy demand for hydrogen increases, the hydrogen is produced through the, one of the forms is produced through the electrolysis. For that, the demand for electricity would also increase. So, increase in demand for hydrogen is directly related to the increase in demand for electricity. And global capacity for electrolyzers has just crossed 300 megawatt in 2021. And India would almost require 600 to 750 times the current capacity in order to produce the increased demand of hydrogen in future. And what are the challenges? We just discussed about the increase in electricity demand. That is the main challenge. We need electricity to produce hydrogen when we go for the through the form of electrolysis. The other challenge being the high cost of hydrogen manufacturing. It is a catch-22 situation. When there is huge investments, we would produce at huge scale and it would lead to economies of scale. But in order to get economies of scale, we need huge demand. But without huge demand, the investors won't put in huge amounts. So we'll have to kickstart somewhere in this cycle to get kickstarted. And water scarcity is another big challenge. For example, 
in order to produce 1 kg of hydrogen through the electrolysis we require almost 9 liters of water so one electricity demand second high cost of production currently with the current technologies and third being the water scarcity these are the main challenges of hydrogen but hydrogen also gives opportunity for india because the three e's of india's energy roadmap that is energy security sustainable energy and energy access all this could be achieved through the form of hydrogen and in order to increase the demand side and the supply side of hydrogen we can follow various strategies listed in the article and what are those on the demand side in order to create the initial demand we have to give a mandate to heavy industries such as the refining and fertilizers to produce and use hydrogen in the manufacturing processes and the government should also give them adequate incentives and secondly those industries which use green steel and green cement in their production processes which use hydrogen based products they need to be incentivized and blending of hydrogen with natural gas has to be promoted we also need to promote hydrogen cng stations and dedicated corridors for long distance trucking which use hydrogen has to be provided this could initiate the demand side of the hydrogen on the supply side we can also follow strategy again and the main is investment into the research and development we discussed about how the current cost of hydrogen manufacturing without economies of scale is too high and if you have some future technology which can reduce the cost of production that could give a high boost to the hydrogen sector so we will have to heavily invest into the research and development and there are various schemes by the government for example the sustainable alternative towards affordable and transportation scheme which has a component to produce compressed biogas and here we need to explore biogas conversion into hydrogen and through a viability gap funding scheme we need to be given to the hydrogen projects and various production linked incentive schemes should be given for those manufacturers who invest into electrolyzer manufacturing and hydrogen projects and in the transportation sector ammonia which is having high den energy density could be promoted as a mode of transportation and all those projects which are linked to hydrogen transportation they have to be combined with the pm gatishakti master plan so by this way by promoting both the demand side initiatives and the supply side initiatives hydrogen could completely transform the india's energy ecosystem and from being an energy importer we can be a energy dominant exporter in the hydrogen sector after few decades and that would also help in achieving the paris agreement and the cop26 goals that india has given to achieve the net zero emissions by 2017 so the author concludes by saying that hydrogen plays a great role in achieving india's net zero emissions by making and being self reliant in the energy sector that is atmanirbhar in the energy sector in the text and context explainer this article about india's palm oil export ban so what is the impact of the palm oil export ban by indonesia and what impact it would have on india indonesia is the world's biggest producer exporter and the consumer of the palm oil and recently it had banned export of the commodity and its raw material from april 28 to reduce the domestic charges of the cooking oil so what led to this crisis why did indonesia ban and what are the alternatives to palm oil and what impact it would have on india let's go through it one by one so what's the importance of palm oil to the global supply chains palm oil is the world's most widely used vegetable oil and it is made from the african oil palm plant and it is used for mainly the cooking purposes and it is also used in cosmetics processed food and in cleaning products here we need to remember in the last prelims there was a question about the uses of palm oil 
and the palm oil industry also faces certain criticism because of its unsustainable production which leads to deforestation because in countries like indonesia and malaysia huge tracts of forest land were cleared and the palm oil plantations came up there and the labor is also exploited in those plantations especially from the colonial era however in spite of all the criticism palm oil is still preferred because it is one inexpensive and two yield it can produce more oil per hectare than compared to any other vegetable oil plants and indonesia and malaysia together account for almost 90% of the global palm oil production and indonesia producing the largest quantity the palm oil makes up almost 40% of the global supply chain of four most widely used edible oils the other widely used edible oils are soybean canola oil and sunflower oil and indonesia is responsible for almost 60% of the global supply chain of palm oil so you can see how the indonesian market is dominating in the palm oil supply chain and why are the prices of edible oil rising there are various reasons the main reason is the demand increased more than the supply and why did the demand increase more than the supply there are various reasons for that the production of soya bean oil took a hit especially in the argentina where it is majorly produced because of a drought and the canola oil which is majorly produced in canada because of the drought last year it also took a hit and sunflower oil as we know is majorly sent by the russia and ukraine area and because of the conflict in area the supplies of sunflower oil from those area stop so you can see on one side the all the alternatives of palm oil their supply is reduced and their prices have increased and when indonesia announced ban on palm oil export the price of current oils are also increased because everybody wants to hold every country wants to hold and buy as much as possible when the prices are low because of which the prices increased and indonesia is also going through palm oil crisis what is the crisis all about the palm oil which is used in cooking is made of the cpo that is the processed crude palm oil and due to short supply of alternative vegetable oils and reduction in output in the second largest producer that is malaysia and the pandemic also led to labor shortages and the food in global food inflation all this led to palm oil crisis in india the rate of palm oil cpo rose almost from 1131 dollars us dollars to 1500 us dollars in february this year so indonesia produces two types of palm oil what is the one is the expensive branded cooking oil and other is the non branded cheaper alternative so the price of the branded palm oil increased from almost 14000 indonesian rupiah to 22000 indonesian rupiah in march this year so you can see how much the prices have increased so in order to protect the domestic industry the indonesian government took various steps for example it started with putting a price cap on the branded oil it said that you cannot sell it for more than so and so price so because of which what happened the consumers and producers started hoarding the commodities illegally and they started reselling it in black market so then the indonesian government put a limit on the people they said a person can buy only 2 liter of cooking oil so again producers they started hoarding and producers were discouraged from producing more oil in order to mismatch bring down the mismatch between supply and demand and in order to meet the domestic demand the government came up with another policy called domestic market obligation wherein the exporters were asked to sell a minimum percentage of their exports in the domestic market for example initially 20% of all the total exports they had to be sold in the domestic market and later it was increased to almost 30% so out of every 100 liters that the exporter wants to export he has to sell 30 liters just in the domestic market of indonesia so all these initiatives were taken by the indonesian government in order to reduce the prices of palm oil in the domestic market but because the government of indonesia took such measures it will reduce prices in the domestic market but it would impact 
the foreign markets where the supply has reduced and that impact would be felt by india and other importing countries the producers were also engaging in illegal holding cartel practices to decide the price and acquiring illicit and illegal export permits to flaunt the export restrictions and other aspect which led to the crisis in the indonesia was the government's policy of blending palm oil in making the biodiesel it called it as green diesel and the blending rate was almost 30% so for every 1 liter of biodiesel production 30% of palm oil has to be blended to it so there is a criticism saying that when the palm oil production itself is not environmentally friendly and not environmentally sustainable how can you call it biodiesel or green diesel that is contradictory in nature and we were discussing when the prices in the domestic market in indonesia might stabilize because of the measures of the indonesian government it would impact the importers especially importers like india india is the biggest importer of palm oil which makes up almost 40% of its vegetable consumption of oil so out of every 100 liters that india consumes 40 liters is just the palm oil and india meets almost 8.3 million tons of palm oil requirements from indonesia the center had contacted the indonesian government to reduce the impact on india but still the price of soya bean and other oils kept increasing because of the fall in production and sunflower oil which india used to buy from russia and ukraine almost 90% of india's imports of sunflower oil to sunflower oil used to come from russia and ukraine that stopped because of the russia ukraine conflict so here you can see a situation where the soya bean oil prices are high the sunflower stopped coming from russia and ukraine and currently the palm oil is also being stopped from the indonesia so it could have cumulative impact on the indian oil market especially the edible oil wherein recently the prices of edible oil were increased and in the coming months the prices are just going to be higher and higher that's about this article in the business page there is a news about center subsidies to the fertilizer sector here there are crucial points for the prelims examination recently the union cabinet has approved increase in subsidies for the fertilizers here we need to know the point the government fixes the retail prices of the urea so the difference between the cost of production and the fixed selling price which is decided by the government the difference amount would be given as subsidy by the government to the producers of the urea so the government fixes the retail prices of urea and difference between the cost of production and the fixed selling price would be given as subsidy to the producers by the central government and the government also fixes a subsidy on it pays a subsidy on non urea fertilizers on the basis of various nutrient based rate there is certain percentage of blending of nutrients and this subsidy is currently being reduced it has been increased especially on the dap that is di ammonium phosphate because of the prices of di ammonium phosphate increased now the government has increasing the subsidies for the non urea fertilizers so this year for prelims the di ammonium phosphate and its uses will be important you can read it in your science and tech question and in the other articles regarding the business page you can skip all of them you can just go through the headlines these are the articles related to economy today thank you so much